All praise, all glory, and all honor is most certainly due to the most high, the God of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to you. In the name of Jesus, this is your brother, Elias Israel of the house of faith. And I count it to you a blessing each and every single time that I can come before you to preach the word of God. And never do I count it as a light thing to do so. Um, today's lesson, brothers and sisters, I want to get right into it and just clear up some uh, confusion about heaven. And because it's a very simple lesson, but many of us, including myself, have been uh, taught that, you know, the, the end game ultimately is to go to heaven. And uh, I'm looking at my reading plan real quick. I forgot to put something on here. Give me a second. And uh, this is just some just side note, something you could do. Uh, you know, it, it say 52 weeks, but you don't have to take 52 weeks to do this. Um, but you just mark them off as you read, as long as you print this out on, on, the, on the web. I use these. Um, I know my father uses them. He has a different method, but he goes to the book several times in a year, you know. And that's just, that's not the time he spent uh, studying or, or doing lessons, writing lessons to, for sermons that he's given, but that's just, and peace to you, Brother Isaiah. Peace to uh, Yahweh's uh, beloved. Peace to you, Yahweh's beloved. Um, um, but anyway, that's just as a side note, as I saw it, I mean, I might as well tell y'all that. I mean, if you won't know what the Bible is saying, it has to understand, you have to read, you know, um, it's just like anything else. You know, Father was talking about that the, uh, yesterday about how, you know, he said, if I, and he was, about, Father's very intelligent, very analytical, very intelligent. Uh, <laughs> but he said, you know, he's, you know, graduated from college, you know, working full time, uh, paid his way through school, did all these things. But he said, you know, if he had took his studies, how he did, took the study of the Bible, it would have been a different story. You know, he was just, he did what was necessary and his grades were decent, good, but you know, you want to know what the word is saying, you have to read. And so, um, and when you do read, getting back to what this lesson is about, this is a simple concept, the concept of heaven. Also, um, like, share, and subscribe, because this is going through algorithms, okay? Uh, like, share, and subscribe. But heaven, just like hell, just like spirit, um, has to be qualified. You have to state specifically what heaven it is. When you see the word heaven, it, it's not necessarily talking about where the Father and the Son dwell, okay? We're going to find that out. But like I said, many of us, including me, we were taught or even if you didn't go to church, it some kind of way society puts it in our minds through the stories we read, through the television we watch, the movies we sit and eat, eat popcorn covered in butter, half dead watching. The concept of heaven continually comes up. You know, you're even watching the sports, uh, uh, some kind of sports competition. You might be watching a football game. Somebody scores a touchdown, and they point up to their to the to their mother who they think is in heaven, who they think is in heaven, so they're pointing up to the sky. Well, you're just pointing at the clouds. You can be pointing at the heavens, um, but one thing for, is for certain is your mama is not there. I know that sounds harsh, and that's not a disparaging remark against anybody's dead one, because everybody you know, wants to say, that's, a, that's also a way the false ministers console us, is that, uh, you know, back in the day, if you listen to them, is that your loved one is in heaven. They're not dead. You're looking at a corpse. You're looking at a car. You're looking at a dead body. They're not in heaven. Oh, they're not there. That's just a shell. They are in heaven. That is a lie. That's a lie. Okay. They are in the ground. Their body is decomposing. Worms are going to eat their carcass. That is the human condition. The beauty of it is, is that there's a resurrection. <laughs> but so we don't have to we don't have to believe a lie, as we'll see. We don't have to believe a lie. Rather, we could just believe in the truth because there's a resurrection of the dead that hasn't taken place yet. You should ask yourself the question: if there's a resurrection at the time of his return, how is it that people are in heaven already? Doesn't make any sense. That would mean they 
they they they, get, they uh receive their reward. Everybody's receiving this reward. Big mama in heaven, everybody's in heaven. When in actuality, people are in the grave. They're in the grave until the resurrection. All right. That's, uh, but listen, like I read, uh, I think I dealt with it yesterday, talking about Job. So you're going to call, not yesterday, the day before, actually. This guy dealt with uh, pagan origins of uh, January 1st, the New Year's Day. But uh, yeah, the day before, talked about death, and resurrection, and how, you know, he said, you're going to call, he's going to call, and I'm going to answer. That's at the second coming. Okay, but Second Corinthians 12, because here we want to find out, and peace to everybody that's listening. It's good to see you there. We want to find out uh, just how many heavens the Bible speaks of, because when you when you say heaven, it must be qualified. Which one? Okay, so this is a uh, Second Corinthians, the 12th chapter and verse one. It says, it is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to the visions and revelations of the Lord. This is Paul speaking. He says, I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Within the body, I cannot tell. Without well, the body, I cannot tell. God know it. And he says something. Such and one caught up to the third heaven. Okay. So, so the Bible speaks of three heavens. Okay. So now the one, let's go to, let's go to Acts. Okay. Let's go to Acts. Just to show you something here about the one who, who went up to the Third heaven. This is Acts, the first chapter, and uh, this is this is the Messiah. He's appearing before his apostles, and he tells them something. He says in verse eight, "But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth." Then he says something. He says, "And when he hath." When he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. So now he's going up. And it says, and while they looked steadfast toward where? Toward heaven. As he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why you stand, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Okay. So now let's go to... Uh, Psalms because the Psalms now we read in uh Corinthians that there were three heavens, right? You have to qualify when you say the word heaven. Let's go to uh let's see Psalms the 148th divisions. Okay, Psalms 148th division, and now he said the psalmist here makes a distinction between that heaven or the heaven of heavens that the Messiah went into, right? That's, that's that third heaven. And then we're going to find out later on if any man has gone there. But this is Psalms 148 and verse 1. It says, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him all his angels. Praise ye him all his hosts. Praise ye him sun and moon. Praise him all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens. Now, I'm going to say that again. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens. What's the heavens of heavens? That third heaven that we just read about. Okay? That's the heaven of heavens. Um, this is, uh, let's, let's read something else. This is uh, 1 Kings, the eighth chapter. And this is in Solomon's prayer of dedication. He says something. Because we're going to go back. Hold your finger in 148. But he says, and also like, share, and subscribe. He says, 1 Kings 8 and 28. He says, uh, excuse me, verse 27. 1 Kings 8 and 27. Solomon says, but God will indeed dwell on the earth. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? This is when he, remember, this is when he's building that temple. This is a dedication. Then he says, behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have built it. Right. So he said, you, you dwell in the heaven of heavens. What's the heavens of heavens? That's that third heaven. OK, so now 
Let's go back to 148, and then we're going to clear some things up. After this, we're going to go to Genesis 148, Psalms 148 and verse uh, 4. He says, praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Now, wait a minute. What does he mean, waters? Let's go to Genesis. Peace to you, Brother Leo. Let's go to Genesis. Good to see you there. Genesis. Uh, And we should pick it up at verse one. He says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. OK, just a side note, when you read God created the heaven and the earth, that's what we understand that the one who actually did that was the son. OK, who is known we call Jesus in English. OK, he is the one that he is the one that created all things. And the father did it through his son. OK. Um. Just to, just for example, you read John, uh, John 1 and 1, it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. The word, you read in verse 14, it says, and the word was manifest in the flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay. So now, when you understand who this is talking about, it kind of opens your Mind up to what's taking place. You can also read in Hebrews 1 and Colossians 1 that Jesus made the worlds, that he's the one that made all things. Okay. So it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. We don't know how long ago that was. The Bible's not telling you how long ago that was. It doesn't tell you it was 6,000 years ago. The Bible does not tell you that. There's a separation between verse 1 and verse 2. So it says, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. At a certain point in time, this, this earth was engulfed in water. We don't know how long of the, the time frame between that and the creation of the heaven and, and the earth. Okay, we don't know this. Now, so he said, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night in the evening and the morning were the first day. This light, which is from the sun, starts to penetrate this water. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. God made the firmament and divided the waters which are under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. That should sound familiar. Psalms 148. Let's go read it again. <laughs> Psalm 148. So he says, praise ye, praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Okay. So again, he says, and God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so, and God called the firmament heaven. Okay. So now you had a separation of these waters. Okay. Now these waters rose up. And even when you look at space, scientists understand that there are huge, I mean, just massive, trillions and trillions of times more water that's on the earth that are in space. So when you think about the waters that be above the heavens, that's above what you see when you look up. So if you want to put to put this in perspective, you got the heaven of heavens, you have water, then you have where the birds fly and, you know, where the sun, the moon and stars are, and then you have the earth. Okay. So you got the heaven of heaven, that's the third heaven. Then you got water. Let's look at this second heaven. Let's go to Revelation, the 19th chapter. Just to, because you, again, you have to qualify what you're talking about. People say heaven just as as, as, as if it's always talking about what a father and the son dwell. This is Revelation, the 19th chapter, and the, uh, we'll pick up at the 17th verse. This is at the Battle of Armageddon. Pay attention to what's said here. He says in verse 17, and I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven. What's a fowl? Fowls are birds. Birds fly. So that's heaven. Again, you got the third heaven. You got water. You got where the birds fly and the sun and the moon and the stars are. Right. He says, come and gather yourselves together into the supper of the great God. That is heaven, brothers and sisters. That is heaven. So again, you always have to qualify what heaven you're talking about. And that heaven, you've been to. What do you mean? You've been in the plane, so you've been to that heaven. But have you gone to the third heaven? We're going to find out. Um, let's go to uh, Matthew, the 24th chapter. We're still talking about this heaven, because I said where the birds fly, and also where the sun and the moon and stars are referred to as that heaven. Okay? 
second heaven, if you will. But the third heaven is where the Father and the Son are. All right. This is Matthew 24 and verse 9, 29. It says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be dark and the moon shall not give a light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Again, that's what all referred to as that heaven. All right. Then it says, and Then shall look at the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in, in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now, let's go to uh, Nehemiah. Because we want to find out another another uh, place that's referred to as heaven, and we can go back to actually Matthew twenty four as well. But uh, this is Nehemiah, the first chapter, and uh, let's see, this is verse six. Now this is his prayer, right? Nehemiah and Ezra were among the ones that went back to the to the land after Babylonian captivity. So he says in Nehemiah 8 and verse, excuse me, 1 and verse 8, Nehemiah 1 and 8, he says, Remember, I beseech thee the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If you transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. Right? That's, that's Deuteronomy 28. Right? That's Leviticus 26. Right? We say captivity and dispersion. Captivity is the punishment for sin. We sitting over here trying to figure out who we going to vote for, not really <laughs> worried about some impeachment. What we need to be worried about is getting right with our with our God. But nevertheless, with our Father, with our Creator. But nevertheless, he said, remember, I beseech thee the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, if ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments, he ain't say he go vote. But if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, Though there were of you cast out into the uttermost part of the heaven. Now he's talking about slavery, captivity. You were scattered abroad. Again, because when you read verse 8, he said what well, Moses said. Well, you, you want to read what Moses said? Again, go to Leviticus 26, go to Leviticus uh, 28. And what do you find? You find him talking about going into slavery. He even tells you the bill of slave ships. You're going to be sold as you're going to go into Egypt again with slave ships. Egypt represents bond bondage. It's, all, it's referred to as the house of bondage. So in other words, you're going not into Egypt, the nation, but you're going into bondage by way of slave ships. And there you be, shall be sold as bond men and bond women. And no man shall buy you. No man's going to redeem you out of that situation. You haven't been home yet. You will be driving around in a Cadillac, but you have no knowledge of self, no knowledge of identity, no knowledge of your original language, your original name, your original culture. You don't have any clue of that. And then you in somebody else's land under laws that were not made for you, thinking that, that, you wanna, that you know something about freedom. You haven't a clue. You haven't a clue. Freedom is based on sovereignty and land, of which you have neither. <laughs> pay my taxes though uh uh nine nine he says again but if you turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them though there were of you cast out into the uttermost part of the heaven yet will i gather them from thence and will bring them unto the place that i have chosen to set my name there what was he mean you were scattered to the heaven but you were on we were scattered throughout the earth but he refers to it as heaven that's why it's three. You got the heaven of heavens, right? Where the Father and the Son's will. You got that the water. Then you got that heaven where the birds fly and the and the and the, uh, the sun and the moon and the stars are. And then earth is also referred to as heaven. We just read it. Let's read it. I said, hold your finger in Matthew 24. Let's read it again as earth referred to as heaven. In one place, that's why I say you got to qualify it. In one place, he tells you where the stars of heaven, but then he says something else in Matthew 24 and verse 31. He says, because he's talking about the regathering of Israel that's going to take place when he returns. See, that's when Israel is going to be redeemed. The true Israelites are going to be redeemed as a Israelites are going to be redeemed as a people at the return of the Messiah. That's when that's when that's going to happen. But it said, and he, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of the trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. From the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. But are they scattered in the sky somewhere? They certainly not in, in 
These these captives, these Negroes are certainly not in the heaven of heavens. They're not floating around in the sea. He not he not uh gathering them from outer space. He not gathering them from from the clouds. They were scattered throughout the earth, brothers and sisters. Again, the heaven of heavens where the Father dwells, Father and the Son dwell. You got water, then you got that heaven where the birds fly and the sun and the moon and the stars are, and then you have earth, which is also referred to as heaven. Peace to everybody that's listening. It's good to see you again. Like, share, and subscribe. Because as my brother Leo said, this is through algorithms. So the more people like it and share, the more people perhaps will hit a message. Now let's go to uh, John, the gospel according to John, because the question is, are you going up yonder? No. So when you understand this, other things you might read, you'll be grounded because you say, wait a minute, I know what my master or my Messiah said. What did he say? That's what we need to know. What did, what did the Messiah say? I love the word of God because you know what? When you It don't change. It does not change. This is going to say the last thing. It's going to say the same thing uh, it said the last time I came here. How long ago that was to read this. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. And I'm thankful not to be uh, tossed to or fro with false doctrine. Because it, it seems like this is the <laughs> this is the time of the people that are going, going astray off of false doctrine. That's what it, it just seems like. Uh, call after call, email after email, comment after comment. That's what it seemed like. People go off, off of, of doctrine. I was talking to uh, my brother, you little piece of that brother, if he listening, I don't know. But he was talking about how somebody, uh, he was having a conversation with somebody about, about people being in heaven already. You can't read that though. And even what they read, not understanding what they read, they assumed that that's, the, that's what that was talking about. So I'm thankful that I don't have all that confusion. And one thing about it is people, that, well, a good thing to do is to build a basic foundation. A basic foundation of understanding of what you are grounded upon. So when you see something that don't make sense or that goes against what you read here, 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 and here, you can understand that, whoa, maybe I don't understand what that's saying. Instead of just Instead of just jumping out the window and saying, oh, yeah, this is what this means. Not, they don't, no. That's what I'm saying. Constantly get that stuff. John 3 and 13. So is, is Big Mama and Big Daddy, your favorite uncle, your sister, your brother, are they in heaven? Your husband and your wife, John 3 and 13. And no man had to send it up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven even the son of man, which is in heaven. Now, who came down from heaven? We know that the, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. We know that he was on the throne of the Father. We know that he ascended into heaven. We we read in Acts 1. So why are you gaze up looking at him? He's going into heaven. He's coming back in like manner. Peace to you. He's coming back in like manner. So again, and no man had ascended up to heaven. Now, some people might say, that I got you. Now, we, now, now first of all, we got we not really, really need to consider who we gonna believe. Are we going to believe the Messiah, the Christ, the one who made heaven and earth, the one that Moshe and Moses was, was communing with on the mount? The one who died for your sin, the one who was God in the beginning. Are we gonna believe him? Or are we going to believe some foolishness some man says? Let's go to, uh, for some, he said, well, what about Elijah? Elijah went to heaven. What did I say early? You got to qualify heaven. Let's see if he went. Let's go to 2 Kings, the second chapter. Let's see if he went into the heaven of heaven. This is uh, Second Kings, the second chapter. It says uh, in verse one, and it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind. 
And Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Okay. So now let's read it. Let's because he didn't want him to go. He said, let's let's read a little bit. He said, uh, and Elijah took his mantle. I'm a verse eight. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they two went over on dry ground. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I have taken the oh, taken away from before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon thee. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. So some people say, see, he went into heaven. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, you, one thing about it, we can keep reading it. It's a beautiful thing. It's going to say the same thing. Like I said last time I was reading this, it says in verse 12, that's why I love the word of God. It said, and, and Elijah saw it, and he cried, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and ripped them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Like, share, and subscribe, brothers and sisters. And peace to everybody that's listening. Verse 14, and he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elijah went over. Verse 15, no. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elijah. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. Verse uh, 16. And they said unto him, behold, now there be with thy servants 50 strong. Now listen to what they're saying. And verse 16, I'm going to read it slower. And they, and they said unto him, behold, now there be with thy servants 50 strong men. Let them go. We pray thee. We asking you and seek thy master. Let us go look for him. Let's peradventure or perhaps the spirit of the Lord have taken him up and cast him. Listen to this. Cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, ye shall not sin. Now, wait a minute. Peace to you, brother. Now, wait a minute. If he went into the heavens of heavens, why would they say this? Why would they say this? And they urged him. They were looking for him. They didn't find him. He said, I, I know I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have did that. But they didn't say, oh, he went in the heaven of heavens with the Father. They didn't say that. Why not? Because that's not what happened. Matter of fact, because what heaven, you guess why you got to qualify. Let's go to Acts the 8th chapter and see a similar thing. And there's other things we can read about that, but this should, this should be a, this should be sufficient. Ask the eighth chapter. Ask the eighth chapter, and we want to pick it up at verse. Uh, I'm gonna just get right to it. This is after after he uh, baptized the Ethiopian eunuch. We're gonna find out what happened after he did that. This is Acts the eighth chapter, and verse thirty-seven. And Philip said, "If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest." And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. OK, so now what we should be getting out of this is you have to believe. Right. And when you believe, you are baptized. That's the example you see over and over and over again. And that's the all who don't believe you have to be baptized. You need to be baptized. The Messiah was baptized. He was without sin. You've been sinning all your life, most of your life. Even growing up in the words, you done made a mistake. So you are worthy of death. If you believe that he came and died for your sin, you need to be baptized. You got all these Israelites running around here talking about you don't have to be baptized. No, you need to be baptized. Let me, let me say this also, that it need to be said. Everybody that claim they're Israelite don't mean they know what they're talking about, don't mean they're in the truth. They have no, have some inkling about identity, 
about God's people being a black people that have been scattered into slavery all over the world. That is true. You can prove that archaeologically. You can prove that historically. You can prove that biblically. Now, there's other, there's other foolish doctrine that you have and the foolish actions of others. Let me say this publicly. We don't ascribe to that. We don't ascribe to that. Because people are trying to put... <laughs> Trying to put everybody in a box. Like I made, I was talking to my brother in Eula, just side, just a sidebar. I was talking to him about it. And I said, listen, you go to you go to any prison, and you got people who have committed heinous crimes or who are career criminals and so forth. If you did a poll and asked what religion are you, many of them would say Christian. But one thing people don't do is say, all oh, Christians do this. Many of others will be Muslims. Now, even though they try to say that all Muslims are not terrorists, all Muslims, the vast majority of Muslims are not terrorists. Do I believe in their religion? No. Do I believe in the Christianity of today? No. But they'll, but you, so my point is, you can't put everybody in a box, which is you see efforts to do that today. You see efforts to do that today. Everybody that's calling himself is not of the true faith of what these scriptures are talking about. Nevertheless, Acts the 8th chapter. Like, share, and subscribe. Acts the 8th chapter. It says, and he and he commanded, verse 38, and he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, listen to what happened. And remember what we read in 2 Kings, the second chapter. And when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Wait a minute. Now he took him up. Now did the spirit take him up to heaven? The heaven of heavens? He took him up. But did he take him up to the Father and the Son? Well, let's keep reading. It's a beautiful thing. He said the same thing that I said last time I was here. Verse 40, but Philip was found at Zodas and passing through, he preached in all city in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. He just took him to another city, another place, just like Elijah was taken to another place. But the place that he wasn't taken to was the heaven of heavens, John the third chapter. Why do I know this? Because of <laughs> the Bible tells me so, specifically the Messiah, John three and thirteen, and no man had to send it up to heaven. That's talking about the third heaven. And we know it through contextually what he's talking about. But he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven. We know, we read in Acts that he went into heaven. Let's go to Acts, the, uh, Acts the eighth chapter. Or uh, Acts the seventh chapter. Oh, excuse me, John the seventh chapter. John the seventh chapter. Then it says uh, in verse 33, then said, Je Acts, excuse me, I keep saying Acts, John 7 and 33. Then said Jesus unto him. So again, we had a Messiah saying this. He said, yet a little while am I with you. And then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall seek me and shall not find me. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. You cannot come. You are not coming. Where does he go? He went to the third heaven. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father. Wait, it backs us. I keep saying Acts. Psalms 110 tells us when if the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou in my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Okay? So again, whether I go, you cannot come. John the eighth chapter. And let's pick it up at uh let's see. Well, let's go to, matter of fact, let's just, John 13th chapter. John 13th chapter. He says, because uh, he also says in John 8, but he says it here also, John, he says it several times. John 8 and 33, little children, yet a little while I am, I am with you. Ye shall seek me. And as I said unto the Jews, will I go, ye cannot come. So now I say unto you. We might as well read it in Acts, man, John 8 and 21. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me and shall die in your sins. Whether I go, ye cannot come. How many times has he got to say it? But you're going to say, I'm going to heaven. But 
No, you're not. No, you are not. You're not going. He told you when I go, you can not come. He said, no man had to send it up to him. The dead ain't that, and you ain't there. You ain't going. You not going. Let's read something in Isaiah 14 chapter. Because here we see the mindset of the one. Now, if he's talking, now, he told you to pray, our Father, John, in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. We're going to read, we're going to read it soon. Resurrected beings going to be on the earth, brothers and sisters. We know we can read even with a father and a son going to be on the earth. But you want to get to heaven when you cannot read that you're going to the third heaven. This is uh, uh, Isaiah the 14th chapter and verse 12. Is that how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? He said, now, now, now wait a minute. Because I've heard even who this is talking about. Look, understand one thing about it. I've heard, I've even heard people say this talking about Jesus. Now, now listen to what it said though. How art thou fallen from heaven? Jesus didn't fall from heaven. You fallen from heaven. Like you didn't got kicked out. Luke, uh, let's go to Luke. The 10th chapter and the 17th verse. And the 70 return, I'm, man, that's what I say. I'm so happy that I'm grounded in some sound doctrine. Luke, the 10th chapter and the, the 17th verse, and the, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Let's go to uh, Revelation, the 12th chapter. I'm reading because that's that's literally a doctrine that I have heard that this Lucifer, this light bear, this is talking about the Messiah. Jesus, this is not talking about the Messiah. Uh, Revelation, the 12th chapter and verse. Uh, I'm going to just pick it up in verse nine because because you read in verse seven. that was war in heaven. Michael and his angels. We talked about that uh, last uh, <laughs> Last uh, Bible study. There'll be another one on Friday, this Friday at eight. Well, when at eight p.m. Central Standard Time on Zoom, I'll put the the details up on YouTube. But uh, we talked about Michael. A brother had a question. Uh, he was dealing with well, right, he was dealing with somebody who was saying Jesus is the, is the uh, Archangel Michael. So on one hand, you got Jehovah's Witnesses and others. According to him, I had never heard. He said uh, Seven Day Adventists. Was saying that too. I'm not familiar with that. Hadn't heard it. Had to maybe research that. But I have heard. I've had. I've come into contact with Jehovah Witnesses to try to tell me that. But uh, on one hand, you say you got people saying that Michael is the archangel. On one hand, you got some that say he Lucifer. But the Lucifer is talking about Satan. Verse 7, and there was war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. That's that third heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. That's why he said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now we're in Isaiah, the 14th chapter. How I, in verse 12, how thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? You got to put it together. Like, share, and subscribe. You got to put them together. Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which did is weak in the nations? How, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation of the sides of the north. That's the mindset. Now, wait a minute. The, what did the Messiah tell you to pray? Hold your finger here. Matthew, the sixth chapter. You should know it by heart. You probably were taught this as a little child. I know I knew this as a little child, had no clue of what it meant. Verse 9, after this, Matthew 6 and 9, after this manner, therefore pray ye. So this is the Messiah telling them how to pray. They asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray. As John taught his disciples, he said, our father, side note, indicating what you should be. If y'all all got the same, we all got the same father. What are we supposed to be? What he is? But everything has all order. Jesus Christ, the first fruits, they that are Christ at his coming. He said, after this matter, therefore pray ye our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In name, acknowledge the Father, he's holy. 
Then it says, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So he's got a kingdom here on his earth. He told you to pray for. He, when, when Peter came to him and said, Lord, we forsaken all that follow thee. What shall we have there for? He tells them. Did you go and sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel? He talks about eternal life. He never told them that they were going to heaven. You read in Revelation, he tells you to he that overcome it will sit with me on my throne, even as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. The father's throne is in the heaven of heavens, that third heaven. Jesus' throne will be the throne of David on the earth in Jerusalem. You ain't going up yonder. So again, Isaiah the 14th chapter, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Now, if this is Satan and this is his mindset, if this is Satan and this is his mindset to go up into heaven and your mindset is to go up into heaven, but the Messiah said, where I go, you cannot come. The, the Messiah told you to pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. He told you, you sit on thrones. That's going to be on the earth. Whose will are you aligned with? That's just something to think about, brothers and sisters. That's just something to think about. That is something to think about. Now, let's go to uh, 1 Thessalonians. Because some will come here and talk about a rapture and this puts you in heaven. First of all, there is no rapture. People get all emotional. There is a rapture. No, it's not. First Thessalonians 4, and like, share, and subscribe. First Thessalonians 4 and verse 13. Because here he tells you about, Paul tells us about those who have died in Christ. But when he says go up, we're going to find out what that's talking about. We're going to just tie this this. Because a lot of times people want to get certain places and try to put you in heaven some kind of way. You ain't going up yonder. First Thessalonians 4 and verse 13, brother, but he says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you saw not even as others which have no hope. Now, those who are asleep, that's a euphemism. That's a nice way of saying the dead. Verse 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. He bringing them how when he returns. Verse 15, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. In other words, those who are alive at the second coming of the Mashiach or the Messiah, peace you, Brother Tony, it's good to see you. Those who are alive at the second coming of our Messiah are not going to prevent those who have died in Christ from getting their reward. So it says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. What heaven? He's coming from the heaven of heavens. Then he's going to roll the heavens back like a scroll. What's that? That's talking about the sun and the moon, where the sun and the moon and the stars are. He said, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. See, what he's talking about, brothers and sisters, is the resurrection at a particular time. What time? At his second coming. He's talking about meeting him in the air because you're going to come back down with him. That's the only way you could do it. You have to meet him in the air in order to do that. But notice he said, hey, you not meet him in the third heaven. And then you're going to just be there. No. Let's put you back on the ground. Let's go to Zechariah. Let's get, let's get, some, let's get some soil under our feet. Zechariah 14 chapter. In verse uh, 3. Zechariah 14 chapter in verse 3. It says, Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. I'm talking about Armageddon. Now listen to this. He said, And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. Hold your finger here. Why is the Mount of Olives so important? We read in Acts, the first chapter, right, that he ascended up into heaven, but we didn't read this part. In verse 11, it's Acts 1 and 11. Still hold your finger, Zechariah 14. He said, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Verse 12, then returned they unto Jerusalem. 
from the Mount called Olivet or the Mount of Olives, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. So he he told the angel told him he's coming back in like manner. He's coming back to the same exact spot of his ascension. So again, verse four, Zechariah 14 to four, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the mess, midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountains shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee, verse five, and ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach into his all. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and the Lord my God shall come, listen to this, and all the saints with thee. But how can that take place if they're on the earth? He said, we read another place, you're going to call you gonna call him an answer. He, that's going to happen at his second coming. They're going to meet him in the air, and then they're going to come back. They're coming back in two bands, just like Jacob. Matter of fact, hold your finger just to show you something here. It's just a side note. Genesis, the 32nd chapter. Genesis, the 32nd chapter. It says in verse one, and Jacob went on his way and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's host. And he called the name of that place Mahani, which means literally two hosts or two bands. Why? Because all the people that were with him, then you had all of those angels. When the, when the Messiah come back, he gonna come back with angels and he gonna come back with resurrected beings. Psalms 149th division. Psalms 149. Just a side note. This is Psalms 149 and verse 5. He said, let the saints be joyful and glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praise of God be in their mouth and the two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written this honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. When he come back, he coming back in that same spirit of bringing judgment on the earth, but you're coming back with him. You're going to be a part of that again. Angels and resurrected beings. That's why when you read in Revelation, the 19th chapter, talking about him coming back on a, on a, on a horse with armies, on a white horse with her armies, that's what that's talking about. That's a part of that army. That's a part of that army. Those, again, who have been resurrected, coming back to take over this world, and where are they going to reign at? Let's read it. Revelation 19. Let's just read this real quick. Uh, in verse 11, I saw heaven open again, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. That's when you read in Genesis, the uh, 49th chapter, it's talking about the Messiah, the one that would come out of Judah. His eyes were red like wine, and his teeth White with milk, righteous indignation. Verse 12, his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself and his name was called and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, symbolic of all the killing. That's why I tell you in Isaiah around the 63rd chapter, I tried, who is this that come from Bulls Rock with dyed garments? I said, if he's trying to wine press, I'm trying to wine press alone. And he was called with a vessel dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. The fine linen represents righteousness. Those who are coming back with him in a righteous indignation along with him. That's what's about to happen. That's what's about to happen. So these ones that are going to do this, obviously they're going to be victorious. He told you to pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That's why he had all on the crowns. That's why when you read in the 11th chapter and the 15th verse of, of Revelation, it says, and the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever. Revelation, the 20th chapter. Because where they going to reign at? Revelation, the 20th chapter. Where they going to be at? It says and I, in verse four, and I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received this mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now they reigning with him. They sitting on thrones. 
Now he said, listen to what he said though. He said, uh, they live in the reign with Christ a thousand years, but the rest of the day live not again until a thousand years. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he to have part in the first resurrection. He says, on such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. But reign where? Let's stay in Revelation. Stay in Revelation. Because he made a priest and king. Like he said, he'll, you'll be what he is. He's a priest and he's a king. Revelation 1 and verse uh Five and from Jesus, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, Jesus Christ, the first fruits that are the Christ that is coming, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. So, where they reigning at? We keep seeing kings and priests. Where are these kings and priests gonna be at? Revelation, the fifth chapter, Revelation, fifth chapter, verse 10, it says. Well, verse uh, nine, it says, and they sung a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. Same thing we just read. Out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, he's not a respecter of persons. It's about who's going to serve him. It's not about your nationality per se. Even Israel left Egypt in a mixed multitude. They had some Egyptians with them. They had some other people with him. A mighty nation had many people from different places come, and they all contributed in some form of fashion, whether they're the base level of the economy through their labor, sometimes slave labor, or sometimes the best scientists come from different places. An example of the United States. That's what happens because when, when, when a country has a lot of money. I'm saying all that to say they left as a mixed multitude. So much for only Israel can be saved. But nevertheless, he says... Uh, and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And verse 10 said, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. That's where it's at. Now let's go to Revelation, the 21st chapter. Even on the earth. Even so, he's going to have a thousand millennial reign of the Messiah. That kingdom is going to be delivered, delivered up to the Father. Then you're going to see something because what he's created, new heaven and new earth. He's cleansing the earth. That initial cleansing takes place when he, when he does it, he purges it through fire. See, water can clean too. Water cleaned the earth of filth in the days of Noah. It's reserved unto fire this time. It's reserved unto fire this time. So when you see Sodom and Gomorrah, brothers and sisters, that is a shadow of what's to come with this whole earth. Now, uh, Revelation, the 21st chapter, he says in verse one, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth will pass away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride a door for her husband. As the Messiah said, I go and I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I shall come again and bring you to myself. I've been at funerals, and they say, he went to prepare a place for you in my house on many mansions. If it were not so, I'm not said unto you. Hey, but he, he, they leave out the part where he said, and I shall come again. He's bringing that here, brothers and sisters. That's what he's doing. Verse 3, because it's going to be a time where there's no more death. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with me. We're going to find out where this dwelling is. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. No more death, no more pain. But then he says something else. Let's skip down to verse uh, 22. He said, and the city, because this is New Jerusalem. He says, and the city had no need of the sun, neither, verse 23, or verse 22, 21 and 22. He says, uh, and I saw no temple therein for the Lord God Almighty uh, and the Lamb are the temple of it. So what does that mean? That means the Father and the Son are both here.
It says, uh, so again, and the city had no need of the sun, neither the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which I say shall walk in the light of it. Listen to this. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor unto it. Who it is? Those who reign as kings and priests. But they are they are all, that's what the eighth day of tabernacles point to. Or something brand new. There's no more flesh and blood. Tabernacles is a memorial, but it's also prophetic. It's memorial in the sense that it points to what? It points to Israel dwelling in booths when they were in, in the wilderness. But it also points to us sharing this tabernacle and having a brand new tabernacle. In other words, you will have a brand new body. But where is this going to be at? It's going to be on the earth. So are you going up yonder? No. <laughs> You're not going up yonder. You can't go. It's not happening. It's just not happening. Let's read one more place and this is it. Yeah, like, share, and subscribe. This is uh, Isaiah the 45th chapter and verse 18. He said, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, but God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. He formed it to be inhabited. Even when he told them in the beginning, he told them uh, to replenish the earth, to subdue it, right? After the flood, he tells them, to, he tells Noah and those who survive, replenish the earth. Man has done that. But understand, brothers and sisters, it's even larger than that because in the ethic, when he said, I'm creating a new heaven and a new earth, when the father comes back, or when the son comes back, rather, that's what he's doing. That's his work. That's part of the work he's doing. And it's going to be delivered up to the father once he gets through with all the filth. Once he gets through with, with it's clean, then the Father and the Son and all the resurrected beings are going to be here on this earth. And then you got something brand new. He never told you the plan was to take you to heaven. He never told you that. Even when you're talking about in Revelation, because uh, you read it in Revelation, the fifth chapter, the fourth chapter, fifth chapter, it's talking about the elders. That's a projection, brothers and sisters. That's a projection of the mind, just like how. Like, John's mind is being projected. And what's being shown unto him is to show him this so he can understand what's taking place. But that don't mean, brothers and sisters, that you got some people in heaven. That don't mean that. You better put the, you can't take one scenario and then make a doctrine out of that. And then uh, you're going to discount what the Messiah said about going to heaven. You're going to discount all these other <laughs> all these other scriptures about showing you what the plan is. Because it's not to take you to heaven. And with that, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you to wait the House of Faith meet every Sabbath at 5925 West 25th Avenue in Gary, Indiana at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. We live stream right here on the Israel Teach YouTube channel as well as at www.israelteach.org. If you've uh, been edified through the ministry and like to leave a donation, you can do so on our website. 100% of the proceeds go to the work of the ministry. You can just uh, make your donations through PayPal if you would like to. Um, we also have Bible study every Friday evening at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's on Zoom. Um, and you can come there and ask your questions. Uh, they've been, I think they've been fruitful. They're much more interactive. Um, we're able to talk to one another face to face, if you were at least as far as the screen will allow us. Um, but through the internet, people are able to ask their questions and everybody can hear them and be edified. You don't necessarily have to show your face. Um, a lot of people, some people don't want to do that, which is understandable. Um, but it's, it's edifying and people could ask questions and, and, and they could be answered to to uh, according to the Bible. All praise to the Most High, brother. All praise to the, uh, to the Most High um, for that. And uh, Again, like, share, and subscribe. And with that, brothers and sisters, it is always my prayer that you will edify.